Hello and welcome to episode two of Defining Moments here on Watford FC. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by a former Watford FC defender. He played 254 times for the football club. It's none other than legend, Paul Robinson. Robbo, how are you doing, buddy? I'm all good, thanks, mate. You looking forward to this? Oh, yeah. Mate, some cracking shirts. Um, we'll start off with a picture taken at the start of the 97-98 season. A very fresh-faced Paul Robinson, if we can pan in on there. Um, what were you thinking going into that season first, Robbo? Excited, yeah. Um, obviously, looking at my picture, a bit scary. <laughs> Look like I've lost a bit. I've lost a bit of weight, so I'm happy with that. That's a. But yeah, no. It's, for me, obviously, to make an impression, my first season, hometown club, wanting to wanting to impress not only the fans but my my teammates. So yeah, I was really looking forward to it. A big moment at the start of that season was your first appearance, you scored on it. Um, late in the game, you made a run from left back, Gifton found you on the outside, talk us through it. Also talk to us about the celebration, because it was a bit, bit off the cuff, wasn't well, it? When it's your first goal, <laughs> it always is, isn't it? Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, obviously great memories. Me and Gifton come through the youth team together, so we knew how each other's games were at the time. Um, I just remember him holding the ball up, getting loads of space and turning, and then me just overlapping. Uh, my bombarding runs that I used to do down that left wing all the time from left back. Um, just shouted at him to give me, and it was a perfect weighted pass for me. Just, um, and then I just had to beat the goalkeeper, and lucky for me, I, I had a cool finish. Did GT encourage you to bomb forward a lot of the time at Watford from left back, or was it kind of you picked your time to do that? Yeah, well, Kenny Jackett, my youth team manager at the time, was always, he always encouraged me to get forward, because I, I played up front when I was younger, and then I went to left mid, midfield. So I was always renowned for getting forward all the time and supporting my attacking players. And Kenny was no different with me when I went to fullback. And then Graham, when I got in the first team, was always, don't change. Always go and, go and get forward, support your teammates. And then on that night, obviously, your first goal. <laughs> and then the celebrations, well, mate, the obviously. Celebration. <laughs> so bad. So bad. If only I had Fortnite then. <laughs> I'd have come out with so many other for, like some so many other these celebrations that these kids come out of now. It'd been brilliant. Well, I will tell you what, the celebration was good for the next one. Uh, it was a little bit later on in the season, another home game in that shirt, and it was Luton Town at home. Yeah. Now they were playing a really high line. You just got caught in behind. Yeah. Could you believe how much space you had? Because it was a great flick on, but you were there, just tucked it past the goalkeeper. Yeah, if I can remember it, Jason Lee, the ball was coming into him, and I think I was right behind him at the time, and I just said, chest it forward, Jason. And obviously Luton's defence were they were just going to go and get tight with him. Great, great chest forward from Jason, and then obviously I just had to have the composure and Mate, calmness to finish. put it under the goalkeeper. Tidy. <laughs> get your local rivals, get in there. Did it, did it mean a little bit more scoring against Luton? As, as you mentioned, local lads, born in Watford, went to school in Garston. Did that mean a little bit more? Yeah, of course it does. When, you, when you're playing against your local rivals, in front of the fans, first goal against them as well, it's, it's a big moment, um, especially for me as a young boy. And then Harry the Hornet, he was running on the pitch and I, I even forgot to celebrate with him and I think I just hit him as he was running off. Great um, stuff. But no, great times. And in terms of just the preparation for the Luton games, did, did you do anything different for that one? Was that maybe the week building up to it? Was the adrenaline pumping a bit more than usual? When, you, when you're up for your rivals, I don't, you don't need a lot of motivation yeah. going into them games. Obviously, Graham would always go through the same routines of how we prepare for every game. But when it's, when it's Luton, the motivation's there for you. It's your local rivals. Let's just go and do all the talking on the football pitch. So, yeah, I mean, leading up to the week, I think everyone was just so excited to get the game up and going. That season, the 4 0 win, the iconic one that Watford fans always look at, at Kenilworth Road, was it four goals in 32 minutes? Yeah. You were on the bench. What was that like as, as someone who wasn't playing but had a great view of, of the action? I think a lot of what fans can really reminisce about that game really well. How was that for you from, from the sidelines? If you could say I had a great view, I think I had a, a few fists <laughs> coming towards me from the dugout. I mean, it was, a, it was pretty scary moments, to be fair. Um, obviously, the Luton fans all around us, the dugouts, them times were that side of the, in, their, in their crowd. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we didn't hold back on the celebrations, did we, either? <laughs> no, exactly. And you're looking at Peter Kennedy with his goals that he scored. You're looking, don't come over here, Pete, seriously, because you're just going to encourage the fans even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dugout was just getting filled in. So I'm, I'm literally, I'm like curled up in the corner yeah, yeah. trying to hide, but at the same time going, yes, go on, get in there. Um, but again, great experience for me. Uh, Pete, I mean, on, on his day, he's, he's quality. Mate, what a left foot, by the way. Unbelievable, unbelievable left foot. I mean, his delivery as well from set pieces and, and putting balls in, into the box from, from dangerous areas in the final third. You just knew he would always pick someone out, and, but his, his second goal, that strike. Yeah, mate. 
It's like the old technique. side side, yeah, yeah, side yeah. volley was. It, you just you could follow it now. It just arrowed straight into the corner. Yeah. Was that one of the best atmospheres you played in? Maybe at your time at Watford. Yeah, because I would say the rivalry between both sets of fans. Um, obviously being there at Kenilworth Road, it's just that intensity. But but no, I mean you could just see the hostile environment of their fans getting irate just because of the way we were playing and the goals we'd scored. Yeah. Right, we'll move on to another uh, Peter Kennedy special. It was away at South End, a hat-trick for him. I think the pick of the bunch was probably the free kick, which was an absolute worldie. Um, how good was he to play with? Especially being on the wing, you probably linked up with him a few times. What was he like to play with? So underrated. I mean, for me, Pete was obviously... For me to start with someone like Pete in front of me, Northern Ireland International, <laughs> technique. Was, was unbelievable. Watching him training, he'd do the same with the set pieces. The goalkeepers had no chance. You see Chambo scrambling from side to side, trying to get the ball out the back of the net. Um, and when, when you know that he's lined up for them opportunities, 100% you put, it, put your house on him to score a goal. And obviously, it was a title-winning season. The penultimate game of that season was Bournemouth at home. And I remember hearing from Robert Page, he said, you did the lap of honour at the end of the game and there was hair standing up on his neck. Was that the same for you, the atmosphere at Rickeridge Road going into Fulham away the next week? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, because we were away for the last game, so it was always important for us to, to appreciate the fan support throughout the season um, and just to get that winning feeling. Do you know what I mean? Going into the last game, knowing that there's an opportunity of winning the league, it was just great, great feelings. And yeah, from a young kid, I just loved it. I loved everything. I mean, look at, look at the smile on him there. There's a celebration <laughs> with a fan, got the old fan pitch invasion. <laughs> How important were the fans that season, though, in terms of the momentum you had go going into every game? The fans were always important to us. Um, win, lose or draw, we always appreciated their support home and away. Um, and, and that's the way it should be. You should have that connection with your fans. Um, and we was always appreciative of everything that they, they did for us. Um, so, yeah, when you're celebrating with the fans at the end, I mean, what a, what a feeling. That's a great picture, that is. That it is it just shows picture. what it means to everyone, yeah, yeah. not just us as players, but to, to, have, that, to have that picture and to have them them occasions where you get the opportunity to celebrate with the fans, it's, it's, it's something special. I'll tell you what, it's a perfect segue to Fulham away and the scenes off the game. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, we have to, first off, the scenes inside the change room. You actually weren't there for 15 minutes, were you? No, I was crowd surfing. <laughs> but I, was, I was stuck on fat shoulders outside. I mean, yeah, I just got carried away with, with the atmosphere. I mean, I can just picture myself still sitting on their shoulders, just enjoying the moment, being a part of it, making sure that they are all having a great time and celebrating all together and, and yeah I look around and everyone else has disappeared and I'm thinking where is everyone yeah yeah and then obviously when you're looking back on Tommy's interview from last week and he's saying well Robbo come in 15 minutes late I was like, well yeah because I was crowd surfing like you should have been um, but no nah, I mean we got in the dressing room and champagne was popping bodies were popping everywhere and I think Darren Baisley was break dancing it was just it was just surreal moments that you you just cherish them for the rest of your lives just because of how, how special they were. Is that one of the most memorable moments at your time at Watford, Craven Cottage away, 97, 98? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my first promotion, um, homegrown um, as a kid, wanting to achieve those things as a football player, it all come true for me on that day. And just to, to sort of like celebrate with special people, um, fans, with the staff members, you, you never lose their memories. Moving on to more celebrations, Robbo. Um, there's a picture of you on the open top bus parade uh, with the Division 2 title. I'll tell you what, those sunglasses are still in fashion, by the way. They are. <laughs> They're Tom, top draw. Tom Cruise. Um, again, we mentioned the supporters. I mean, look how much it means to, means to the guys. What, Division 2 title. Um, again, how much did that mean to you all as a squad to see the support in their masses in the town centre? Incredible. Incredible support. Um... And that's what Graham wanted. Graham wanted the fans to celebrate with all the players. Um, the open top bus was, again, another amazing day. I don't know how I managed to keep hold of the, the trophy. I, I think, I'd, I think I've been drinking like continuously after we'd won the championship. So, so yeah, great days and just, just great celebrations for everyone. I mean, to see the streets full of yellow, black and red, like just flowing through the streets, it, it's just it, amazing. Yeah, so special. absolutely brilliant mate you can check out our episode with Tommy Mooney uh, on the channel if you click here and if you want to subscribe to see more content we've got one coming up with Gary Porter and click subscribe just here